Okay, I love the baseball thing you got going there. So I don't know about any of you, but I think I have finally, and with the help of daylight savings time, caught up from that sleep deprived state I, I was in during the span of the World Series. You know? <laughs> All I can say is, thank God they won it in six games. I don't know if it lasted in seven. I was reading last night um, some of the accounts of the, of the World Series parade from, from yesterday. It sounds like it was a wild, wild scene. The, they wouldn't exactly guess how many people attended, but, but um, the, the transit system said it was like a, a, a major work day where over one million people take rides um, on any given work day in Boston. It reminds me of why I'm so glad I don't work in Boston, you know? Um, there is this one account of, of uh, a young woman who said that she, she landed on the curb at 6.30 in the morning because she wanted to make sure she didn't miss the, um, the duck boats as they came by. There was a, another guy from New Hampshire um, who, uh, who said that um, when they won in 2007, he missed the parade because his son had just been born. So he wanted to make sure that he took his now six-year-old son to the parade because in true Boston fashion, he didn't know how long it would be before they wanted another school. <laughs> so his son was on his shoulder. Police said that, that happily no arrests were made. I'm not sure when it became something to celebrate that there were no arrests after a World Series. But at any rate, no arrests were made. But they did say that they had to pull a number of people down from trees. People had climbed up trees and I guess lampposts so that they could get a, a better view of the, of the duck boats passing by. You know? How many people were there, elbow to elbow, sort of excited, jumping up and down so that they could catch a, a, a glimpse of the, the bearded boys from Boston, you know? What a great thing. So if you can imagine what it would have been like to be in that crowd yesterday, then it gives you a little bit of a sense of what it might have been like to be in the crowd that we hear about in today's gospel story. So, okay, we're not talking about hundreds of thousands, but we're talking about a pretty good sort of throng of people. And they're all gathered around this Jesus character. This is pretty far in Luke's gospel for those of you that are just tuning in. It, it's, it's well into Jesus' ministry so that the buzz about him is great. He's already performed a number of miracles. People are talking about that. He's already begun to challenge the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders. People are talking about that. Did you hear what he said? He's been a little bit scandalous, a little bit edgy because he's hanging out with, 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 with women and, and, and with, sorry ladies, but that's the day. He's hanging out with, with, with women and with Samaritans and, and with people who weren't, who weren't supposedly in the inbound room. You know? People are talking about that. And so clearly, there's enough buzz around him so that as he's moving through Jericho, there's a People are jostling for position, you know, they want to see this guy. Because maybe, maybe he's the Messiah. Maybe he's the one that, that for centuries they've been waiting for. Maybe he's going to make everything different, just maybe. And so they want to get a look at him, you know. He's walking by, he doesn't need a duck boat, because when you can walk on water, you don't need a duck boat, I guess. <laughs> but he's walking by, people want to see him. In the crowd, Zacchaeus. We don't know much about him. We know two things about him. One is we know that he's short of stature. Maybe Dustin Pedroia's size. And we know he's a tax collector. For him to be in that crowd was quite extraordinary, actually, because tax collectors were hated, were hated by the Jews of those times. They were hated because the tax collectors were seen as working for the Roman sort of government. And the tax collectors were usually pretty wealthy. The tax collectors made their wealth by taking a little extra money from people and, and pocketing something. So they were hated. And, and for Zacchaeus to be out there amongst the crowd, you know, people who were looking at him and, and, and pointing at him, that would have been an easy thing. 
But he's heard about this Jesus guy too. But he wants to see for himself. I wonder if this guy looks different. I wonder, wonder if there's something about him. But he's short of stature. He can't see because the crowd's around him. And so what does he do? Luke says he goes running ahead. Running ahead, and he sees a tree, and, 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 and he you know, jumps up on the tree, and, and he's hanging out up there on a branch so he can look down on the crowd. Now, imagine, how many of you want to go running and climbing a tree right now? You know? I mean, this is kind of, kind of extreme behavior from a stuffy old tax collector. No insult if there are any accountants in the crowd, but you know, back in those days, this is kind of extreme behavior. There he is, anyhow. He's in the top of the tree, he's looking down, and, and, and imagine sort of the energy building as the crowd's getting closer, and the, and, and the noise, the chatter is getting louder. And, and, and finally, the, the, the parade is right underneath him. And then this wild thing happens. Not only does Zacchaeus finally get look at Jesus, looks up at him and says, Zacchaeus, what are you doing up there? Calls him by name, calls him out. If I was Zacchaeus, I would have fallen out of the tree right there, you know? <laughs> but he doesn't just, he doesn't just see him, he doesn't just call him by name. He says, Zacchaeus, hurry down. I don't know why he says hurry. I love the energy about that. Zacchaeus, hurry down, because I must stay at your house tonight. I guess when you're the would-be Messiah, you can invite yourself over at time. <laughs> <laughs> hurry down, I must stay at your house. Zacchaeus, he swam down the tree, hurries down, Luke writes, hurries down, welcomes Jesus and says, okay. Then a crowd is gathered around Jesus. They are indignant, you know? They're grumbling. They're like, how does he rank? He's a tax collector. He's a sinner. What is Jesus doing hanging out with this guy? The crowd has that, 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 been waiting for hours to catch a glimpse of Jesus. Now, they're not so sure what they think about this Jesus character, you know? But Zacchaeus, the story's not over for Zacchaeus. Because even while people in the crowd are, are, are calling him names, and hurling insults at him. Zacchaeus stands there, he takes it, and then, and then the biggest surprise of it all, he says, look, what am I going to do? He says, I'll tell you what, I'll give away half of what I own to the poor. Because he's heard that Jesus cares about the poor. I'll give away half of what I own to the poor, and, and, and I'll make right all, all, with all the people I took advantage of. I might tell you more than make right. I'll give, I'll give them four times what I took. What a shot. I don't know if anyone in the crowd heard it because they were probably too busy complaining about it. But what a shot was the key to make that change. This is a gospel with so much action, so much energy, so much chaos and passion and excitement and surprise. If you can't feel it, then think about what, what it was like when you watched the, the Red Sox win the World Series, you know? And, and then if you were waiting to see the, the duck boats come by. Just joy and shock and chaos, all of that, right there. That's this scene from Luke's gospel. Now, for those of you that are, are longtime members of St. Luke's, you know that we're in the middle of our, of our commitment campaign, our pledge season. And so, as I think about Zacchaeus, who decided that the way to embrace Jesus was to give half of his belongings and to make right with all those he'd taken money from, I'm like, well, this just teased me up for a stewardship sermon, now doesn't it? <laughs> but don't worry. That's not where I'm going with this. <laughs> but don't forget. Because <laughs> we've got five, five little ones here, five ones short in stature, who are about to be baptized. And so I want to ask two questions this morning. 
One to the so-called St. Luke's congregation, and one to you parents and godparents. So stay tuned. But here's my question to you, St. Luke's. For these five who are about to be baptized, who, who are going to be short in stature to try and catch a glimpse of Jesus, so what kind of crowd are you going to be? Are you going to be a crowd that, that makes it hard for them to see Jesus? That gets in the way? That shouts out Jesus' grace with grumbling? I don't think so, because I know you. I don't think so. But are you going to be a crowd that helps these little guys catch a glimpse of Jesus? You see, he's fretting about that. He wants to know. Totally okay. No, 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 it's okay. Don't grumble about this, because this is the Holy Spirit here. But seriously, crowd, how will you help these little guys and girls catch a glimpse of Jesus? How can you do that? As a church, as, as a church that's supposed to be part of the body of Christ, how can you do that? Now, now, say that again? Welcome them even when they cry. Believe me, we didn't work this out with her. <laughs> but I was going to say, and she knows me better than anyone, that's my wife who takes it and does. I was going to say, so you guys know me, sometimes I ask a question, I really want to answer. So, so give us some answers so that these people can hear. How else besides welcoming them when they cry, how else can we as a crowd help them catch a glimpse of Jesus? What else can we do? Pick them up when they fall down. Literally and figuratively. Yes. What else? Include other people. Thank you. What else? Just love them. What's that? Just love them. Just love them. Jesus was pretty good about that, right? What else? Lead by example. Lead by example. Right. What else? Sing them a song. Sing them a song. <laughs> That came from the choir in case any of you were wondering. But you're so right. And look at how that's influenced these young people here. If they're going to know Jesus, and if they're going to feel like church is a place to come to know Jesus, then we as that crowd that gathers around Jesus every Sunday need to make sure they can glimpse him in our presence. That's why we don't do private baptisms. That's why we do baptisms in the context of a Sunday service. Because we, as a gathered crowd of so-called believers, need to help the newly baptized glimpse Jesus. In all the ways that you just mentioned and ways that weren't mentioned. Okay, now I'm coming for you. Don't worry. How are you, as parents of these ones, short in stature. How are you going to lift them up so that they can see Jesus? Don't care. If you're new here, I'm not going to ask you to answer yourself. But I do want to leave you that question before we do this, this baptism in just a moment, before we enter into the baptismal covenant. Your challenge is to lift them up so that they can glimpse Jesus. Because the crowd out there is fast, it's loud, it's noisy, and it's not always interested in this Jesus character. And it certainly isn't always interested in living the way that Jesus challenged us to live. Right? And so, the challenge for you as parents is to lift up your little ones. And say, look, right there, in the middle right there, there's Jesus. I hope that you'll consider bringing them here and be able to find Jesus alive here as well. If you're not sure how you're going to do it, just lift it up. If you're thinking, well, gosh, that's a tall order. <coughs> then let me remind you of the words that you're about to speak in this baptismal covenant. They're actually the words that are at the heart of our commitment campaign this year. Because with every promise you make in this baptismal covenant, the response is, I will with God's help. That's how, together as a crowd, and as a family, and 
as one's a little statue. We glimpse Jesus still alive today. Okay. So let's.